Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Blitzball Champ is back once again with another video here for you on the U to the Tube. All right, we're going to be talking some pro wrestling in this video. Uh, got quite a lot to cover. Going to be talking some stardom. Uh, going to be talking some New Japan Pro Wrestling. Going to be talking some... Uh, WWE, um, got a good bit to talk about. So, um, you know, just to be specific, going to cover Osaka Dream Cinderella from Stardom, um, go over a little bit of the Super J Cup, um, go over the Wrestle Kingdom card, um, go over the Slammy Awards that were announced, and also the award winners. That were announced and then we got the nxt year in awards uh that were just announced so got a good bit to talk about so let's dive right on into it so um stardom just recently had their big show osaka dream cinderella in osaka japan um and they just posted it not too long ago on stardom world so i highly encourage y'all to to check that out if y'all haven't i watched it earlier today but I'd have to say, this was a great show. I mean, a really great show. Let's get into it. Started off with the Future of Stardom Championship, um, which was a triple threat. Um, this was Micah, the, the champion, defending against both Sayas. So you got Saya Kamatani, and you have Saya Ida. Um, wow. Wow. This was a huge huge upset and one that did not see coming but i'm actually very very happy at the outcome saya ida of stars after hitting a sick brain buster on saya kamatani is now your new future of stardom champion the little giant herself is the future of stardom champion and I also want to add she also hit a uh, really, really sick flipping um, avalanche, like, uh, it was like a flipping avalanche blockbuster of some sort. And I was just like, dang, Saya Ida is really rocking it in this match. And honestly, I'm proud of her. I'm very proud of her. You know, I mean, I like Sam Saya Kamatani and I definitely like Micah, but Saya Ida really. This was pretty much her biggest biggest victory in her career because I think this is her first title. Yeah. Um, interesting thing that I learned, um, which I didn't know about before. So for those that don't know about the future of Stardom Championship, um, people, uh, ladies like uh, Utami Hayashishita, um, Starlight Kid, have also held this title. So in order to challenge for this title um, is two things, um, pretty much an either or scenario. You have to either be, um, I th if I remember correctly, you have to be 20 years old or less. So 20 years old or less. And, um, or you have to have been wrestling for um, less than two years in order to challenge for this championship. So it's either or um interesting um stipulations but i understand i totally understand um it's a championship for the up and coming rising stars um so after saya ida won the title she actually requested a rule change because she's actually about to hit that two years um being a pro wrestler um even though she just now won the belt so she actually opted for a rule change for them to say, instead of uh, less than two years wrestling, make it less than three years wrestling. So, you know, hopefully they'll honor that rule change. But I think it's very interesting. And um, I would love to see see how how good of a championship run Saya Ida can have. I mean, you know, being part of Stars, I know she's known for losing quite a bit, but she she won the big one on December 20th. So, hey, I want to see how 
how good of a champion she can be. So congratulations to the little giant, Saya Ida of Stars, on becoming the new Future of Stardom champion. Um, next up, next up we had a few tag team matches just, you know, just kind of thrown in there. We had uh, Ruka of Stars teaming up with Riho, who's still unaffiliated, going up against Oedo Tai's Natsuko Tora and Konami. And, you know, Konami uh, submitted Ruka with the Triangle Lancer, which, I mean, honestly, as far as the whole card, this was probably the weakest match on the card. I mean, it wasn't too long. And it wasn't a terrible match. I just felt that it was the weakest on the card. So, um, but yeah, Oedo Tai gets the victory. Konami, Triangle Lancer. It was the, it was the right outcome, if you ask me. Um, and then we had another tag team match after that, which uh, put Donna Del Mundo's um, Himeka and Natsupoi taking on Oedo Tai's uh, Saki Kashima and B. Priestley. Or Presley. Um, this was a pretty good tag team match. This was actually very well back and forth. Um, I'm very impressed with Saki Kashima's agility. She's really been surprising me lately. I mean, I expected that out of Natsupoi, but Saki Kashima may have to keep her in mind for a, a future high speed championship run. I think I think she would do well. Especially uh, with Oedo Tai. I think she would do very well. But um, Himeka gets the um, victory for the tag team, hitting the running powerbomb on Saki Kashima. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a good tag team. Really, really good tag team. And, you know, Himeka and Natsupoi have teamed up before, and they got good chemistry. So, hey, I dig it. Um... Next up, we had the high speed championship match. Um, the champion Azumi of Queen's Quest defended against uh, Mei um, Hoshizuki. I think I said that right. Mei Hoshizuki. Um, I know Azumi hadn't been wrestling much because I believe she was recovering from, I want to say it was either a sprained wrist or broken thumb or sprained thumb, something like that because she had the. The, the hand wrap, but um, she was good to, to wrestle in this match, and this was a high-speed, counter-heavy fist match. <laughs> I mean, goodness gracious, I don't think I've seen more pin attempts in a match than that match. Oh my god, like, pin here, pin there, reversal here, reversal there, pin, pin, reversal, pin, pin, reversal, pin, re reversal, pin, pin. Oh my god. It just... It, ugh. I feel like it was a little too much, but I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, high speed is it's like the cruiserweight version, so I get it. But ultimately, Azumi retained. And, um... Yeah. It was, it was a high, fast-paced match with a lot of reversals and a lot of pen attempts. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can say. But Azumi is still your high-speed champion. Mm, pardon me. Next up, we had the Artist of Stardom Trios uh, championship match, which was a, um elimination tag match. Um, you have the Cosmic Angels that are the champs defending against uh, stars of um, Mayu Iwatani, Starlight Kid and Goki Ken Death. Of course, um, Cosmic Angels is made up of Tam Nakano, Mina Shirakawa, and Unaki Sayaka. Um, so the way things went down was really, really shocking to me. So, Stars actually going through the match at one point had a three on one advantage on the Cosmic Angels. Yeah, after Unagi Sayaka got eliminated first, she got pinned by um, Goki Ken Death, and then Starlight Kid pinned Tam Nakano, the leader of, of Cosmic Angels, with the Tiger Suplex, and just like that, Stars had a three to one advantage. 
Now, um, for the record, the way Stardom does elimination uh, tag team matches or any sort of elimination match, you get eliminated by pinfall, submission, DQ, or if you get thrown over the top rope to the outside. That's the, All four of those count as an elimination. So keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, Mina Shirakawa was the only one left of Cosmic Angels, three-on-one disadvantage. Um, but was able to eliminate both. First, it was um, Mayu Iwatani. Um, drop kicked her over the top rope. Then it was um, Starlight Kid also got sent over the top rope. And it came down to Mina Shirakawa and Gokiken Death. Of, of all matchups I could have think of, I did not think it was going to come down to between those two. But, but yeah, it came down to those two. But, um... At the end, Mina Shirakawa just showed her toughness and just took the victory home and successfully defended the Artist of Stardom trio's titles, getting the final elimination on Goki Ken Death. Winner, Cosmic Angels. Um, great match. Uh, just did not think that Mina Shirakawa was going to be in a three-on-one disadvantage, but... Overall, it was still a great match. It was a long match. It was definitely a long match, as expected. But, um, and then afterwards, uh, pretty much Tom Nakano announced that Cosmic Angels are now their own stable. They are no longer part of Stars. And honestly, saw that coming a mile away. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. They got a group together, they got their own stable together. It was only a matter of time. Even though they were a subunit, it was only a matter of time before they would end up being their own stable. And, um, Stars wanted to challenge again for the Artists of Stardom trio's titles, but this time, instead of Goki Ken Death with uh, Starlight Kid and Mayu Iwatani, switch her out for Saya Ida, the newest uh, future of stardom champion. So um, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, we have our official newest faction. So we got stars. We got Queen's Quest. We got Oedo Tai. We got Donna Del Mundo. And now, Cosmic Angels. I like I like where all this is going. I really do. So, but good match, good match. And then next up, um, we have the double title match. So, we have both the SWA Championship and the Wonder of Stardom Championship. Winner take all, pretty much. It was the Wonder of Stardom Champion Julia of Donna Del Mundo taking on Donna Del Mundo's stablemate and SWA champion, Shuri. And as expected, went to a 30-minute time limit draw. And honestly, hard-hitting match. Very much back and forth. These two ladies, I feel like these two ladies are the, are the strongest in Donna Del Mundo. You know, Shuri is, is a long-time veteran. I think Shuri is probably the oldest one in the stable, but, you know, she's the long-time veteran. And uh, I expected nothing less of her, and Julia has been on a roll um, this whole year, and especially since she won the um, Cinderella tournament. So, yeah, these two ladies went at it. It's a great match. But the outcome was the right outcome. Uh, time limit draw, nobody loses their titles. So, yeah, I think I think that's how, how you have to do it. Because it wasn't that long ago that Shuri won the SWA championship. So, this was a good call. This was a good call. Um, And then the main event. The 
World of Stardom Championship. Utami Hayashishita's first defense of the Red Belt is against the leader of Queen's Quest, her stablemate, Momo Watanabe. Um, this was a great match. This was a extremely great match. Definitely main event worthy. These two know each other very well, and it shows that they have excellent chemistry. Back and forth, back and forth. There were some really, really close calls. I mean, Momo hit the peach sunrise and the tequila sunrise and just, yeah. Still kept kicking out. Ultimately, it was a BT bomb from Utami Hayashishita that sealed it. And thus completes her first successful defense of the World of Stardom Championship. Um... Afterwards, there were some, you know, there's some words. Utami Hayashishita got on the mic. Um, and she wants to defend the title in January at the 10th anniversary of stardom. And it looks like she has a challenger in the form of Donna Del Mundo's Micah, who came to the ring after the match and challenged her. And Utami Hayashishita made a point. To this day, between those two, they both have one win, one loss, and a draw against each other. So, hey, why not have the, the rubber match and put the title on the line? And I, and I like what Utami Hayashishita did. So, that's a match to look forward to. I think that can be a hard-hitting long-winded match that can really deliver. Micah and Utami Hayashishita, who know each other very well. Because remember, those two faced each other in the past, even way before this, back when um, Utami Hayashishita was the future of stardom champion. So these two ladies go way back. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes this time. Um, But yeah. Um, there'll be a stardom match, uh, at Wrestle Kingdom 15. Uh, I believe it'll be a dark match, but they announced that that's going to be going down. Um, and apparently they debuted a new logo, new stardom logo. So, eh, it was okay. I like the current one more, but I mean, hey, new year, new logo. I get it. But, um, another great show. Another great show from them. Was very, very happy. All right, and we go to uh, so the Super J Cup, which was won by El Fantasma of Bullet Club, and this is actually the second year in a row that he's won the Super J Cup, the flashy gold jacket and all. And the interesting thing about this is that um, he'll have the opportunity to face. Hiromu Takahashi, because Hiromu Takahashi called out whoever won the Super J Cup he wanted at Wrestle Kingdom. So, looks like that's going to be happening. Thus, for this transition into the card for Wrestle Kingdom. So, Wrestle Kingdom 15, January 4th and 5th, two nights. So, this first night, um, the opening match is going to be a New Japan Rambo, which I, I guess is like a New Japan, like, four-way or some sort of rumble, Royal Rumble or whatnot. Um, don't really know what the scoop on that is. Um, you got the first match. Actually, the first match is the best of Super Junior winner and the Super J Cup winner. So, Hiromu Takahashi versus El Fantasmo. Should be good. Should be really good. We got um, the IWGP uh, Tag Team Championships on the line as uh, the Dangerous Techers of Zack Sabre Jr. and Taichi defend against uh, the Grills of Destiny, who won the um, 2020 World Tag League. Um, we got uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus the Great Okarn. We have um, 
um, Kazuchika Okada versus Will Ospreay. That that should be really good. Um, and we have the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Double Championship match. I really hate that they're still doing that. They need to separate those two. Because it's taken away prestige from the Intercontinental title. They need to separate the two. Oh my god, they're really going to do that. Um, but Naito defends against uh, Kota Ibushi. So, um, which Kota Ibushi originally won the, the G1 Climax tournament. And then night two, let's see, let's see night two. Night two. Okay, so night two, they're doing the stardom exhibition match. So that'll be on night two. Um, and then we got a, a four-way match for um, KOPW 2021. Uh, let's see, still um, the competitors aren't set. We got... Um, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team uh, Championship match um, as the champs of Yoshinobu Kanemaru and El Desperado, which will be good to see Kanemaru back from uh, injury, so that's good. But yeah, they will defend against Master Wado and Ryusuke Taguchi. Um, we got the Never Openweight Championship match, which the champion of Shingo Takaki will defend against Jeff Cobb. Um, we got a singles match showdown, uh, Sonata versus Evil. Ooh, that should be interesting. Um, we got the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match, which the champion of uh, Taiji Ishimori, Bone Soldier. So he will defend the title against whoever the winner is of Hiromu Takahashi and El Phantasma on night one. So whoever wins that, gets Ishimori. Um, and then we have the second IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Double Championship match, which um, whoever the winner is of night one between Naito and uh, Ibushi will defend against Jay White since he um, owns the rights to challenge the double title holder. So, man, two nights of a pretty dang on stacked card on both nights. This should be good. This should be a good Wrestle Kingdom. Wrestle Kingdom 15, looking forward to it. Okay. You go over the uh, Slammy, WWE Slammy Award winners. Um, but yeah, I got the list here. I'm going to just start from the bottom. So winner of referee of the year was, uh, Charles Robinson. Uh, the double cross of the year was Bailey betrays Sasha Banks, you know, which was, which was pretty shocking. Cause I think like me and a whole bunch of others were probably originally thinking it was going to be Sasha Banks betraying Bailey. But, hey, I, I think the right one won. Uh, celebrity Appearance of the Year, Rob Gronkowski won. Ugh. Um, WWE Network Documentary of the Year was uh, the un won by The Undertaker, The Last Ride, which that definitely makes sense. Um, the Trash Talker of the Year went to Lacey Evans and The Hurt Business. I mean, I, I, I guess. I mean, I would, I would have thought more for the Hurt Business than Lacey Evans, but eh, whatever. Um, Social Media Superstar of the Year went to Bailey. Um, Musical Performance of the Year went to Elias. Really? Like, like, like he really had any competition. Come on now. I mean, come on now. 
Um, the most creative 24-7 pin went to Drew Gulak in a janitor outfit. I don't even remember seeing any of these. I think these are just made up. Just random categories just made up. I didn't remember seeing any of these before. That's that's just weird. Um, The moment of the year went to The Undertaker's final farewell at Survivor Series 2020. Yeah, closing the chapter, or pretty much closing the book on one of the most iconic superstars in WWE history. It was a big deal. It was definitely a big deal. So totally understand why that one won. Uh, male superstar of the year goes to Drew McIntyre. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of figured that. Um, female superstar of the year goes to Sasha Banks, which that doesn't surprise me. I feel like there was a lot going for Sasha Banks since her return. So, yeah. I mean, there's there's a fair argument that it could be it could have been her, Asuka, or Bailey. Or maybe even Becky Lynch or Charlotte. I mean, they, I mean, those were good candidates, but I think Sasha Banks was was a good pick. Uh, the breakout star of the year goes to the Street Profits. Really, you you give it to a tag team? Really? Hmm. Uh, you give it to a tag team? I don't agree with that. I really don't agree with that. You could have given that to Bianca Belair. But you give it to a tag uh, I don't agree with that one. Um, Ring gear of the year goes to the New Day. They do get pretty creative with their ring gear. I mean, I don't know why Carmella and Seth Rollins were on the list. I don't know. But Bianca Belair, Shinsuke, Sasha Banks, Charlotte Flair, those, those are decent nominees. The return of the year went to Edge. Yeah, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. Uh, Roman Reigns was definitely, I think Roman Reigns is definitely a strong second place. Because his... his Return and pairing up with, you know, Paul Heyman and, yeah, I mean, yeah. But I think Edge winning was the right call. Tag Team of the Year goes to the Street Profits. Okay, that, I, that, that's fine. That's fine. But I, I would not agree with them being Breakout Star of the Year. But I'll give them Tag Team of the Year, sure. Uh, rivalry of the year goes to Edge and Edge versus Randy Orton. Uh, yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Cause I'm sorry, Seth Rollins versus the Mysterio family that got old quick. That got old quick, and even Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton got old quick. But um, I feel like Sasha Banks versus Bailey could have possibly won, but but yeah, Edge versus Randy Orton that was a pretty big deal. But um, match of the year went to Undertaker versus AJ Styles, the Boneyard match at WrestleMania 36. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, mm, I wasn't, I wasn't too big on on a lot of the, the the nominees on this list, to be honest with you. So. Eh, whatever. And Superstar of the Year went to Drew McIntyre. So, yeah, that concludes the Slammy Awards of 2020. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't know what else to say about that, but hey, congrats. And then finally... We have the NXT Year in Awards um, that just got announced, um, which the voting is open, and the winners will be announced uh, not this 
not tonight's NXT, but next week's NXT. So the December 30th edition of NXT. So look forward to that. But you can go and vote for these now on social media. Um, so the nominees for Female Competitor of the Year are Rhea Ripley, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Kaylee Ray, Tegan Knox. That's quite a list there. It's definitely quite a list there. Um, those are some good candidates. Those are some really good candidates. I like that list. Uh, nominees for Male Competitor of the Year are Finn Balor, Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano, Keith Lee, Walter, and um, Tommaso Ciampa. That's another good list. It's another good list. Um, yeah, that that's tough. That's a tough list. Uh, the nominees for Tag Team of the Year. You have um, Undisputed Era, Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch, Brizongo, Imperium, Gallus, and Legato Del Fantasma. Okay, seriously, instead of just Tag Team of the Year, just, just, do, just do Stable of the Year. Just do Faction of the Year. Because, there's, I mean, Imperium could be any of those folks. You know, Gallus is a is a three so it's a three man stable stable. Imperium's a four man stable. Legato de Phantasma, three man. You know, like Undisputed Era, four man. Just the only tag team on here really is Oni Larkin and Danny Birch and Brizongo. So I mean, I don't know. My thing is maybe they should think about maybe do stable of the year or faction of the year rather than you know tag team because there's more stables on that list than tag teams if you ask me rivalry of the year the nominees are adam cole versus pat mcafee candace LeRae versus eo shirai damian priest versus johnny gargano dexter lumas versus cameron grimes shotzi blackheart versus robert stone rhea ripley versus raquel gonzalez Walter versus Ilya Dragunov, and Kaylee Ray versus Piper Nevin. Ooh. You got some good ones, and you got some interesting ones on there. Hard to choose from. Really hard to choose from. Uh, and then we have Breakout Star of the Year. Um, Pat McAfee, Damian Priest, Shotzi Blackheart, Cameron Grimes, Dexter Loomis, Timothy Thatcher, Raquel Gonzalez, Santos Escobar, and Ilya Dragunov. Um, that's a lot of talent. It's a big list of nominees. I guess are they not doing overall competitor of the year? I don't, I don't see it posted on here. I'm going from the WWE uh, NXT Year and Awards link, which I'll link in the description box. But, but yeah, like. I guess they're not doing overall competitor of the year or or um best takeover or anything like that. Huh. Weird. Really, really weird. But guess it is what it is. Um But yeah, that's pretty much all that I have. Um let me let me know what y'all think. Uh, those that watched us uh, Osaka Dream Cinderella, what did y'all think? Uh, those that watched the Super J Cup, what did y'all think? Um, what do you think about uh, the Wrestle 15 two two night card? Uh, what do you think of the winners of the Slammy Awards? What do you think should win in these each of the categories of the NXT Year End Awards? Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all think. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And thank you for watching. This is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram signing off. Hope everybody has a blessed day. See y'all soon.